Heavenly Father, we come in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, to give all glory, honor, and praise to you, God the Father, <coughs> to you, God the Son, and to you, God the Holy Spirit. With your love, you have saved us. With your power, you have raised us. With your blood, you have bathed us. With your mercy, you forgave us. And with your grace, we are so grateful for this amazing new life more abundantly. Father, guide us this and every day to see you more clearly, to love you more dearly, to follow you more nearly, to trust you more surely, and worship you more purely. Give us a heart, Father, to give to you more cheerfully, obey you more willfully, serve you more skillfully, pray to you more cheerfully, and respect your word more fearfully. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Look at somebody and say, where do, where do you stand? And you know from my book, where do you stand? God's measure of a man, God's measure of a woman is not where we stand in moments of calm, comfort, and convenience, but where do we stand in times of crisis, calamities, and challenges? And as we're getting ready to celebrate this African American History Month, praise God. This book was birthed out of one of Dr. King's famous quotes. He once said, the measure of a man is not where he stands in times of calamity, uh, crisis and convenience, but what does he stand in times of crisis and calamities? And again, praise God, uh, I'm so thankful for people like Dr. King who paved the way for the road that we are living on today. And where do you stand is one of the greatest questions that you can ever ask about yourself or ask about anybody that you're in a, a serious relationship with, praise God. We know we live in a world today where oftentimes people spend more time planning a wedding than a marriage or spend more time planning a vacation than retirement. But it's good to get to know where a person stand and and again like the mother eagle before she would let any uh, a male eagle mate with her she's going to make sure that he has the capacity to handle her little chicks when they're born and then she's going to say are you do you have the capacity to handle me if i fall and if you don't have those two tests met somebody say you ain't getting no action <laughs> with the mother eagle that's just the way that she rolls praise god and I take you to Job 1, that was the birthplace of this particular word, praise God. I, one of my favorite chapters, it says that Job was a man who lived in us. He was honest inside and out, a man of his word who was totally devoted to God, who hated evil with a passion. He had seven sons and three daughters. He was also very wealthy, having 7,000 head of sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 teams of oxen, 500 donkeys, a huge staff of servants, and he was the most influ influential man in all the East. How many ladies would say that that was a good catch? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then we go to the, the verse 6, praise God. It says, And one day the angels came to report to God, Satan, who was designate, the designated accuser, that's what Satan is, came along with them, and God singled out Satan and said, what have you been up to? Satan answered God, going here and there, checking things out on earth. And God was so proud, he said, God said to Satan, have you noticed my, my servant Job, my friend Job? There is no one like him, honest, true to his word, totally devoted to me, and he hates evil. And notice 9 and 10, Satan retorted, so you think Job does all of this out of the sure goodness of his heart? heart. Why, no one has ever had it so good. You pamper him like a pet, making sure nothing ever bad happens to him or his family or his possessions. You bless everything he does so he can't lose. But what do you think will happen if you reach down and took away everything that is his? He'd curse you right to your face. That's what. And God replied, we'll see. Go ahead and do what you want with all that is his. Just don't hurt him. And Satan left the presence of God. And I want you to understand that Satan, he only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So we find in verse 13, 
Sometime later, while Job's children were having one of their parties at home at the older son's house, a messenger came to Job and said, the oxen were plying and the donkeys were grazing in the field next to us. The Sabines attacked and stole the animals and killed all of them. And then it says in 16, somebody say, while he was still talking. Another messenger arrived and said, Boats of lightning struck the sheep and the shepherds and fried them and burned them to a crisp. And I am the only one to get out alive to tell you what happened. We go to 17. Somebody say, While he was still talking. While he was still talking. Another messenger arrived and said, The Chaldeans coming from three directions raided the camels and massacred the camel drivers. And I am the only one left alive to tell you what happened. We go to 18 and 19. Somebody say, while he was still talking, while he was still talking. another messenger arrived and said, your children were having a party at the home of the oldest brother when a tornado swept off from the desert and struck the house. It collapsed the young people and they died. I am the only one to get out alive and tell you what happened. Notice verse 20, it said, Job got to his feet, ripped his robe, shaved his head, then fell to the ground and did what? Worshipped. Naked, I came from my mother's womb. Naked, I returned to the womb of the earth. God gives, God takes. God's name will be blessed forever. Somebody say, blessed be the name of the Lord. That's what Job said. Give God praise for a man named Job. And the first year I got called to ministry, y'all, nobody in their right mind feels worthy. But as soon as I said, okay, Lord, if you can use anything, use me. I'm going to trust you through this experience. The reason that I accepted it was because as we were looking at our next pastor, there was a woman by the name of Ida Mim stood up and she said, we don't want them other preachers. We want Brother Parker. I'm just a little puppy. <laughs> I like Jeremiah, I'm too young for this. I don't know how to do this. And, 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 and you know, praise God, uh, how in the world am I gonna do this? But I tell somebody today, that you should never forget God don't call those who are qualified. Give him praise if you got it. He qualifies those who he calls. I know you don't feel like you're worthy. Jeremiah didn't feel like he was worthy. He thought he was too young. And God said, stop saying that. If you're going to worship God, John reminds us that you got to worship God how? In spirit and in truth. Truth is what he said about you. And spirit is what has already done because of what Jesus did for us. You are already perfect in your spirit. You're already whole in your spirit. You're already mature and complete in your spirit. But you got to get your body, somebody say your five senses, your five senses. and your soul, and soul, your mind, will, emotions, and personality to catch up with your spirit. Amen. So Pastor Wilburn is, 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 is ill. And I'm thinking that he is going to be able to teach me how to do this. And the next thing I know, while he was yet speaking, Pastor Wilburn goes home to be with the Lord. I'm getting over Pastor Wilburn going home to be with the Lord. And the next news I get is my mother, the love of my life, goes to get a checkup. And the doctor says, we have found something on the checkup. And then a few months after that, I'm having to do my mother's homegoing celebration. Somebody say, while he was yet speaking. While I'm getting over my grandfather and my mother going home to be with the Lord, I get a telephone call like I got, praise God, last night. How many of you got a, got a telephone call in the middle of the night? Oh, yeah. And when you get one of them calls, you, your heart can skip a beat because you usually know something has happened that ain't the best thing that happened. A friend of mine tell, told me that uh, her mom had passed away and I give her her props as I do this sermon because she's the type of girl that sacrificed her life 
to stick with her mother, praise God. And, 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 and as her mother went home to be with the Lord, she was just saying, Mom went home. And I was so happy to hear her voice because she really has studied the, the book, Where Do You Stand? Mama didn't leave home. She's gone home. And when we understand that God sees the end from the beginning. As I'm going through this, y'all, I get this telephone call in the middle of the night and the person on the other end says, uh, 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 you need to come by your dad's house. Something unimaginable has happened. And when I go over there in the middle of the night, I'm finding out that I got to prepare for his homegoing celebration. While he was yet speaking, news happened. While he was yet speaking, news happened. While he was yet speaking, news happened. And I thank God for the book of Job who taught me to be a true worshiper and not a part-time praiser. The Lord gave. And the Lord has brought him home. Blessed be the name of the Lord. How many know God is too wise to make a mistake? He's too good to be unjustly unkind. He's too, too deep to be explained, and he's too great not to be sovereign God all by himself. How many has got the revelation that God will do what he said he would do? And we don't question his wisdom. We don't question his judgment. We don't get offended by his ways or whatever he allows to be. Because he's God all by himself. And for all you people that want to go around questioning God, that's one thing that I've learned in over 30 years of ministry that I'll tell you today. One, there is a God. And he's God all by himself. And number two, I'm not him. <laughs> His ways are higher than our ways. And as heaven is higher than the earth, so are God's ways higher than our ways. And y'all, as I was getting ready to do my dad's homegoing celebration, because that was the <coughs> toughest uh, 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 of all of them, because it was one of those surprises. God prepared, like he prepared my friend, to prepare for your mother's homegoing celebration. When you got a loved one that you love, how many of us have had a loved one that was just fr fr frivoling up because of the disease. They were getting smaller and smaller, and then the doctors was coming in there and giving them 60 pills a day to take to try to stay alive and try to do uh, transfusions and all of these types of things. And finally, her mother looked at her and said, what, what, what Mother Bradley told Lou one day, I'm ready to go home. And she wasn't talking about no Spark Street. She knew that when this was over, she wasn't leaving home. She was what? Going home. And I don't want to be on no respirator for months trying to keep me alive. When I know, praise God, in my father's house, there are many mansions. When I know he has promised me, no eye has seen, no ears have heard, neither has entered into your heart the things that I've prepared for those who love me. Do I have anybody that really loves me? Hey, son, this ain't your home. You're here for a reason, and you're here for a season. And I'm like Mother Simmons, if you miss me down here, come on up to Mount Zion. I'll be waiting on you. Don't keep me on no life support for six months. You got too many people, praise God. I don't want Grandmama to go. She didn't, God gave you 95 years with Grandmama. If you can't get it done in 95 years. It ain't going to get done. You just wanted to be there in case you need to borrow 20. You wanted that for your convenience. Not like you want to be around to take care of her. Because often that goes on just a few of the relatives. Got the whole weight of sacrificing their life while the rest of them going on about their business. I remember when Pastor Wibben was getting uh, 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 ready to go home and I was out there trying to make that first million by 30. Mm -hmm. And I called him up. He was at St. Paul Hospital. And I said, Pastor, I love you with all my heart, Daddy Funza. And if you need anything, just give me a call. 
And do you know what he told me? He said, son, if you were really concerned, you'd already know my needs. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't give me that. That's right. First John 3.18 says, let us stop saying we love one another. Show me with your deeds and your actions. And we need to stop talking love by the yard if we're not living it by the inch. And you need to give people their flowers oh, while they can smell them. You need to speak kind words to people while they can hear them. And we pass the days of trying to do all of that stuff at home going celebrations if you're saved or at funerals if you're not saved. It's a difference. If it's a home going celebration, you know the best is yet to come. If it's a funeral, you're praying for the grace of God yeah. on a person's life. Mm -hmm. And them days of kicking and hollering and getting, having to be taught a carrot out of the funeral home or the church. Yeah. Hey! Come on now. Mm -hmm. That's right. Stop the show. God has yeah. promised you and me, y'all, when it's time to go home, that he will give you a perfect peace. That, have I got a witness that's a past all understanding if you keep your mind and heart on Christ Jesus and man when it came time to do my daddy's home going celebration uh, people were saying this is too much for anybody you can't do this you need to get somebody else to preach his home going celebration and you know what the Holy Spirit says my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. If I lead you to it, I'm gonna see you through it. And I'm so grateful to this day that I didn't listen to people. But I listened to the Holy Spirit. And I preached that sermon. I did a sermon called How to Deal with Life's Interruptions, which is one of the four tenets of the book where do you stand. God's measure of a man is not where you stand in moments of calm, comfort, and convenience, but where do you stand in times of crisis, calamities, and challenges. And you never know where a man or woman stands until setbacks, heartbreaks, interruptions, and trials hit the fan. And we had somebody that had got a copy of where do you stand, and they were saying, uh, Pastor, I read the whole book and I just looked at that acronym, setbacks, heartbreaks, interruptions, and trials hit the fan. That means where do you stand when the shit hits the fan? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Woo! Yeah. And some people can't handle real stuff like that. Yeah. But I'm going to say it on this tape. Somebody say shit happens. Shit. Oh, if you don't think so, keep living. Boy. Keep living. Now you won't even find a word for it in the dictionary. It's a slang word. But you look at setbacks, y'all. When you in Christ, somebody will say a setback is just a setup for your comeback. Have I got a witness today? Have I got a witness today? The devil thought he had me, but Jesus came and grabbed me. He took me to Job. And he said, if I did it before, I'll do it again. I got you. I got you. He took me to uh, Joshua when Moses died. And he still had to deal, Joshua still had to deal with the children of Israel, those church's chickens. He said, I got you. He said, Moses is dead, but the same way I was with Moses, I'm be with you, baby. I got you. What, how much believe what God ordains, he will maintain. And you go through setbacks sometimes. You work on a job for many days and months, and all of a sudden, look at all them folks, praise God, at Google that just got laid off thinking that you got this great job. Uh, you can have perfect health for years and years and years and all of a sudden you get a doctor's report and your life has changed. You can have a young boy, praise God, that, that has made up his mind that he wants to get married and have a wonderful life and, and if you were a generation ago, you can be 17, 18 and all of a sudden Uncle Sam says, Doo -doo 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 -doo. we need you to go fight 
in a war for guided missiles and misguided men. And some got caught up in that. Some never returned. These things happen in life. Sometimes bad things can happen to good people. And you got to understand that this is what life can be about, but it's not what happened to you, it's what happened within you. And you got to understand, y'all, how to deal with setbacks. Some people fold at the first sight of stormy weather. Don't have to be raining. Just look like it's going to rain. Then I already cut out. I heard your job might be laying off. Might be, not laying off, might be. And they're already gone. But sometimes you got to understand that God works all things together for good when you love him and the call according to his purpose. Heartbreaks. Anybody ever had a broken heart? And I ain't talking about that Al Green. How can you mean a broken heart? Or better, or worse. Lenny Williams from Tower of Power. Oh, 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 oh! I love you! Watch TV, the TV went up. Like, dude, we don't roll like that in the body of Christ. Nobody get that type of love but the Lord. Amen. You do your best, and if your best wasn't good enough, <laughs> let the donor pitch you, but a dog should have bit you. And when you know who you are and whose you are, you just don't roll like that. I wrote about a man, and where do you stand? I'm sitting up here trying to witness to him and share with him uh, the goodness of God and, and how you can do this. And I'm telling him a story about uh, uh, rising on the third day. But he's telling me about this relationship he was in and how this woman did him so wrong. And I can't believe she did me like that. And I said, brother, when did this happen? Eight years ago. <laughs> Man, I got a chapter in here called Rising on the Third Day. Sometimes we pray for cups to pass, and they're not going to pass no matter how long we pray. God is doing a new correction in your life. He's doing something different in your life. And just like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he prayed for the cup to pass and it didn't pass, he was dead all night Friday and Saturday. He was dead all night Saturday. But early Sunday morning, somebody say, I'm getting up. With all power in my hand. That's all you got. Three days. Three days. And it's time to move on. And that's the way we deal with heartbreaks, y'all. We don't give nobody eight years of our life. Either you're going to have to make a change. Because if God closed the door, have I got a witness? He will open up a window. And pour you out a new blessing that it won't be room enough to receive. But you can't sit here with the door that, that I already closed. Talking about I can't believe he left me. I can't believe she left me. You gonna rue the day you left me. Sister, he done already remarried and got kids over here. I think that door is closed. You can go to Miss Rudolph all you want pray for her to bring him back. But he ain't coming back. <laughs> because sometimes God has to make corrections in our life. Sometimes we make choices that wasn't God's choice in our life. And the real person is going to show up. See, when you was dating him, you was just meeting a representative. What do you like? And if you got folks that find out what you like and they can be what you like till they close the deal. And my other women thought they were going to get you, but I hooked you. <laughs> and you know you made a bad choice when you heard that on your wedding day. You hooked me. I ain't no fish. So you're giving your heart to somebody. And they had a plan all along to close the deal. You met the wrapping paper, the representative, 
the reputation, and that's why character is so important. Character is who you really are. The reputation is who other folks think you are. And God reminds us, y'all, that if we ever make a choice, Proverbs 3 and 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and not to your own understanding. The key part says, In all your ways do what? Amen. Who's going to do that? Hallelujah. Before I make any choice, I'm acknowledging the Lord. Yes, sir. And make sure that it's His will that you make this choice. Because Pastor Wimmer would tell us years ago, how do you know if it's the right choice? How do you know uh, if you've been called to the ministry? He said, son, if you can possibly avoid it, don't do it. Because when God called you, how many know you can't possibly avoid it? Right. Same in a relationship. It's like a sneeze. You feel it coming on, but you can't stop. Uh -huh. But if you're sitting there talking about, uh, uh, and all of a sudden you don't get to, ha uh -huh. it ain't time yet. <laughs> Wait on the Lord. I forgot to witness that many of us have been thankful to God that some of the things that we prayed for, we didn't get them. He said, wait. And you're thankful that you waited. And then we have trials. And I say this, y'all, because I'm at a family reunion and I have a cousin that I was in high school with. He said, man, I'll never forget when you preached that sermon called How to Deal with Life's Interruptions and Trials. And I'm saying, man, that was at my daddy's uh, homegoing celebration. When I was sitting up here trying to decide if I'm going to do this, the Holy Spirit said do it. He said, man, I'll never forget that message that blessed me even to this day. And once he put that seed in my head, I went to the drawing board and the Holy Spirit led me to write were do you stand? And this was the seed that took me from not enough through just enough to more than enough to where now I can be a blessing to other folks. I can let other folks know it's no secret what God can do, what he did for others, he can do for you. God takes your pain and turns it into gain. He takes your test and gives you a great testimony. He gives you, take that trial, and he gives you a great triumph. And I close with what Joseph once said. When his own brother sold him into slavery, when Potiphar's wife, the first cougar you read about in the Bible, <laughs> tried to get him to sleep with her, and he refused, and he got sent to jail for over a decade. When the baker and the butler forgot about him, when he had a chance to get him back, he told his own brothers who had sold him into slavery, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. If you can receive it, give God praise today. That's God's word for us today. Look at the person next to you and say, where do you stand? It's one of the greatest questions you can first find out about yourself yeah. And anybody you about to get into a relationship with. And you really never know where a man or a woman stands until the setbacks, the heartbreaks, the interruptions, and the trials try to wreck their plans. Give God a praise offering there. And Father, we just come to you today to thank you for your word. To know that if you did it before, you can do it again. Mm -hmm. yes. And Father, we are either in something, just got out of something, about to go through something. We are so grateful that we have a Heavenly Father, we have a Lord and Savior and a Holy Spirit that has promised that if you lead us to it, you're going to see us through it. Yes. That you will never leave us nor forsake us. And even though... You promised that it all works together when we love you and are called according to your purpose. You never said it would always look good. You never said it would always feel good. You never said it would always smell good or taste good. But because you're not a man that you should lie, we know that you are working it together for good. And we submit to you, Father, that whatever you desire 
to do in our lives today, we simply say like the Lord, have your way. Father, you be the potter and allow us to be your clay. Mold us, shape us, do as you please. We stand with our Lord saying, not as I will, but thy will be done. In the name of Jesus, amen. Give him a praise offering.